Krypton is yet another noble gas, and you know now from previous, vi from previous videos how a lot of the different noble gases are used. Helium is mainly not used because it's a noble gas. It's mainly used because it's lighter than air, and it won't combust like hydrogen, so I guess that's kind of partially because it's a noble gas. Neon is also not used because it's a noble gas. It's usually put in tubes and the, um, has electricity run through those tubes to get the atoms excited and the electrons jumping from energy level to energy level and emitting light. That's not used because it's a noble gas, because you can do that with any element in a vapor state. Um, argon was the first noble gas that's actually made mostly used because it's a noble gas. Um, it's the cheapest noble gas. It's present in pretty high concentration, relatively high concentrations in the atmosphere. So it's pretty cheap, and so it's used for many applications where you want to shield some, something from other chemicals. Welding is one, and light bulbs is a big one. Um, in normal incandescent light bulbs, you have krypton, uh, excuse me, argon and nitrogen in there. And the argon will um, protect the tungsten from burning um, just because it's a noble gas. And the nitrogen will because it is, because diatomic nitrogen is a really, really, really stable compound because of the triple bond in between the nitrogens. Now, why do you need these inert uh, or almost inert gases in the light bulb? Well, when you're pumping electricity through the filament, the tungsten obviously gets really hot. And if the tungsten were in air, where 21% of that is oxygen, it would burn. And you don't want that because you want a long lifetime of the bulb. Of the bulb. So, in the bulb, um, the first bulbs actually had a vacuum. But that didn't work so well because you had to have super thick glass. So then, um, people just, instead of having a vacuum, just put in an inert gas. Um, or an almost inert gas. And the cheapest combination of that um, is a combination of nitrogen, diatomic nitrogen, and argon. Now the thing about that is that argon, both argon and nitrogen are relatively light gases, or not really heavy gases at least. So because of this, the filament, the tungsten filament, although it won't burn, it will evaporate. And that is usually what ends up determining the light, lifetime of a bulb is how long will it take for the tungsten filament to evaporate because there's a huge amount of heat being generated there. Um, in some bulbs, to increase their efficiency, what people do is they put krypton in instead of the argon and the nitrogen. Now this has two benefits. One is krypton is heavier and therefore the argon, the tungsten won't evaporate as fast so the bulb will have a longer lifetime. Also, because it won't evaporate as fast, the bulb can have a higher operating temperature. There can be more voltage going through the filament, and the filament can um, glow brighter. At, at the higher the temperature you go with the tungsten filament, the higher the ratio of light to heat. Now, a normal incandescent light, uh, incandescent bulb will emit 95% of its energy as heat, not as light. So 95% of the energy is wasted. With a krypton light, there's more light emitted per amount of heat emitted, so it is actually slightly more efficient. Now, compact fluorescent bulbs still are way more efficient than even the most efficient krypton bulb. So it's not at all an answer, but if you for some reason need an incandescent bulb, you want it to be more efficient, then you use krypton. Now, the major problem with krypton, and the reason that most light bulbs don't have krypton, is because it is extremely expensive. Um, it can't be mined. There, the concentration of krypton in the Earth's crust is ridiculously low, and even its concentration in, in the atmosphere is really low. Um, it's Concentration in the atmosphere is about one part per million, and its current cost is about $30 per liter at room temperature and room pressure. So it's not like it's a li liquid krypton, 30, you know, $30 per liter. Just as the gas, it's $30 per liter. So you can imagine making bulbs out of these would be pretty expensive, and you'd have to charge more for them. 
Now I do have a Krypton bulb. It's a very small one. It's kind of a cross between a normal bulb and a flashlight bulb. It's a very large flashlight bulb. And this has pure Krypton inside it. Um, this actually wasn't so expensive because if you think about it, this is very, this is not really that much, so it still was pretty cheap. About like five dollars. But, um, so there, there's pure Krypton right there. If you can, if you can look through the bulb, you're looking at Krypton. Krypton was already much more expensive than Argon, but in recent years its price has been going up. The reason its price has been going up is because the demand for liquid air has been going down. Why would this make the price of Krypton going, go up? Well, the answer is because of how people isolate Krypton. Krypton doesn't exist in many compounds because it's, no, it's a noble gas. You can't mine it, so the only way to get it is to get is to isolate that one part per million in the atmosphere. The way people do this is by taking air, cooling it down, and then slowly raising the temperature until everything has boiled off except krypton and everything with a boiling point above it. Then, at that point, some hatch is opened, the um, temperature is raised a little bit, and the krypton boils off, goes in there. Then that is closed, another hatch opens, um, the temperature is raised a little bit more, and whatever other gas that was goes somewhere else. That's called fractional distillation. So, first the volatile compounds such as, the volatile gases such as hydrogen will boil off, um, helium, uh, and then some of the other gases will boil off, and at some point krypton, it reaches the boiling point of krypton, and krypton will, bo will boil off. But this process, it's not worth it to big companies to do this just for krypton. Um, Krypton's, the market won't support that. So the only way Krypton is produced is as a, is a, is a, as a byproduct of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. Nitrogen is like 78% of the atmosphere, uh, oxygen is 21%, so that is a, there is a much higher yield of those. So it's only produced as a byproduct of those. So if the market, if the demand for oxygen, liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen goes down, then there will be less uh, of this fractional distillation going on and the supply of krypton will go down but it's not guaranteed the demand for krypton will go down as well um, so the price goes up and maybe eventually the price of krypton will go up enough that it becomes worthwhile for companies to start um, doing fractional distillation just for the krypton and also there's xenon xenon is the gas is the noble gas below krypton uh, that Xenon's price has also been going up. Although krypton is a noble gas, it's not completely inert. It has been reacted with fluorine, which is the most electronegative element. The reaction of krypton and fluorine doesn't proceed easily, and you need to guide it along with really, really bright lights and cold temperatures. So it's not just that if you're going to mix krypton and fluorine, it'll suddenly react. But Krypton will actually react with other elements, which is quite surprising, considering it's a noble gas. And there is such a compound as krypton fluoride. The element below it, xenon, will actually react with fluorine with no, no extra conditions to help it along. At room temperature, mixing fluorine and xenon, they will react.